So a while back, Peter Brown of Shop Time did a video that he titled Copper Pipe Box. And in that video, he took some copper pipe and he cut it and then flattened it and he used that as a source of sheet metal, which was cool. But what I was expecting was to see something recognizable as a copper pipe in the end product. So that got me thinking about how one might go about that. I had this small scrap of spalted wood that just looked like it had a bandsaw box in it. Then I used a washer to create a line offset from the shape that would be the outside of the bandsaw box. So this is your typical bandsaw box construction. I guess the only difference here is the shape of it. They're round all the way around, whereas a normal bandsaw box is going to have a flat surface to not rock. The other difference is that my drawer front pieces are already cut to the shape they're going to end up in rather than covering the whole front. So cutting the inside, I'm just cutting on the edge of that drawer front. They call it a bandsaw box, but you spend a lot more time sanding than you do bandsawing. So shouldn't it be a sanding box? I guess every box would be a sanding box then. Same as in the previous video, I did one of the boxes with extra compartments in it rather than just a single space. It doesn't take that much more effort to do that. I think it makes it a little bit more useful. There were some cracks in one of the pieces for the drawer front and also some defects in the bandsaw box parts. So I filled those with epoxy. And then I put a eighth inch round over on the outside and a three eighths round over on the inside. And I like how that larger curve on the inside looks. It gives it sort of a different look to it. And this part was tricky. I need to put a groove around the box where the tubing was going to go. And I used a round nose bit to do that. But you can't see where the bit is, so it ended up taking a lot of passes. I had to do it more by sound than anything else. And I used a feather board to help keep it against the fence. And I used some string to estimate the length of the tubing. And to bend the tubing, I did some research. You can get some bending springs. I also found you could use salt or sand and fill the tubing with that. I filtered the sand through a screen. I taped one end of the pipe, poured it in through a funnel. I used a quarter sheet sander with no paper on it to sort of vibrate the pipe to make sure it was settling. Bending the pipe, I had no idea what I was doing. And if I had a do-over, what I would do is I would trace the boxes onto some scrap and attach those to a board in the right places. And that would give you something rigid to bend the pipe around. Because it was easy to bend the pipe around the box, but it was really difficult to bend it around the second one, because the first one would just move. So it ended up taking a lot of trial and error and just bending it freehand. You'll see the, the last bend goes really quickly, because it's rigid enough at that point that I can just bend it around it. And I used some liver of sulfur to oxidize the copper, which smells terrible, so I'm going to do that outside. And I sanded the groove where the tubing was going to go, and I tried epoxying the tubing to the box. And I gave that a day to dry, and as soon as I loosened the clamp a little bit, it went and came off. So plan B was to make some little clips to go over the tubing. Uh, you can find some of these in the hardware store, but I couldn't find any for 3 8 OD tubing. Even if I could, because the tubing is sitting inside of a groove, they would be too tall. So I got some half-inch wide copper strip that's a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I made this little jig to, to make the first couple of bends. And those screws that are holding that jig together are necessary. Did the last bend in a vise. I have no idea if the way I'm going about this is a good way to do it or not. It sort of worked. 
if I had known I was going to need these clips, I would have put the grooves a little bit further away from the edge, further away from that round over in the front, which made me really nervous. But I actually could use a same length screw as the rest of them. Just far enough away from it. But I still had to grind the point off of all of the half-inch screws because they were just a little bit too long. I was worried it was going to end up kind of wobbly, but it ended up pretty solid. I thought about making a base, and I thought about how to attach the tubing to the base, and then I decided to just leave well enough alone because it looked good the way it was. Peter ended his video by saying that he hoped it inspired you. Well, it did. And not just this project, but the two before it, all really flowed from this one thought process. So thank you. And hope it does the same for you.